Every time our family gathers together at our family cottage, uh, the grandchildren and everyone wants to have a nice campfire after the evening meal. So we gather behind the cottage and we have a little fire pit where we build a fire. And I think the children want it because they're thinking about s'mores and marshmallows and things like that. But the adults seem to think about something else. You know, there's something fascinating about a fire. If you've ever sat at a campfire and talked or sung as a family or at some other gathering, a church gathering, there's something mysteriously attractive about a fire, something that you can enjoy looking at and being warmed by, and it's fascinating. I was thinking about that this summer when we were sitting at a campfire, and I thought, what is it that draws people to something like that? If it's not toasting marshmallows, is it because somewhere back in our ancient inheritance, somewhere our old early ancestors used to sit around the mouth of a cave and be warmed by a fire, or they built a fire in order to ward off the wild animals, or maybe later on even learn how to cook with fire. What is there about a fire? I thought of that question when I read our gospel lesson this morning, where Jesus said to the people gathered around him, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it was already kindled. He came to bring fire to the earth. What do you suppose he meant by that? What do you think he was saying to his friends and his followers and the curious people? What kind of fire was he talking about? Well, we can look at scriptures and maybe get some idea of what he was meaning. First of all, the context in which he said it, because it was followed immediately by words which were kind of harsh. I didn't come to bring peace, but division. So the mothers would be against daughters, and daughters against mothers, fathers against sons, and sons against fathers. What did he mean when he said he was going to bring fire to the earth? Other passages of scripture also give a hint, I think, as to what he might have meant. Very often fire is seen as something that is destructive, to be feared. For example, we think of the fire and brimstone that uh, God sent down on Sodom and Gomorrah in punishment for their sin. Or maybe we recall the passages in Revelation which God sends fire upon the earth. There's a frightening passage in Revelation in which it's said that the angels of the Lord took the fire off the heavenly altar and they threw it down on the earth in order to burn it. Clearly, fire can be very destructive. Jeremiah even said in our lesson that we read a few minutes ago, my word is like a fire and like a hammer that breaks a stone into pieces. Clearly, fire is something that can destroy. What was it that Jesus wanted to destroy? What was he about? Why was he bringing fire to the earth? From our perspective, perspective as a resurrected people, we see that one thing that Jesus intends to do, as Luther said, to kill sin, death, and the devil. One reason why Christ came into our midst was to destroy that which destroys us. Our greatest enemy, as Paul said, is death. 
And Christ came to destroy death. Our, we fear all the uncertainties of life. And Christ came to assure us that no matter how evil we may be and how evil the world may be, we are still in God's loving hands to destroy fear. Some people say that the greatest enemy that human beings have is fear. We operate a lot of the time out of fear. We fear the future. We fear the loss of our health. We fear the loss of friends, of prestige, of all the things which we own and possess. And we live in fear of that. And we're taught by the politicians and the world leaders that we are to fear each other. People of different colors and different languages and different nationalities, we are to live in fear of one another. Jesus came, we understand, to destroy fear. Fire, like a wildfire, can destroy many things. But the love that Jesus showed us can destroy those things that threaten us. So I suspect that one thing Jesus meant when he said he was bringing fire to the earth was to destroy that which would destroy us. But then beyond that, fire is a good thing. Our, our, our ancestors did like to sit around the fire and cook their meat on a stick or be warmed by its warmth and not worry about the wild animals who circled around them because they were protected by the light of the fire. And we too see the goodness of fire. For just think of how we have this inert desire to have a nice fire in the fireplace on a holiday or something like that. Fire is attractive to us not just out of sentiment, but also because it can be a good thing. It's interesting to me that fire plays a, a great role in our worship and in our faith. John the Baptist said to his followers, I baptize you with water. But I will baptize, but one comes who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He will give you more than I can give. And what is given is the kingdom of God. You and I have been given by an, an eternal kingdom by the coming of Christ to the earth. You and I through the cross, know what eternal salvation is. And we turn to our God in gratitude for that. But more than that, in, we enter into that kingdom through fire. Think about it for a moment. On Easter, we light what we call the Paschal fire. And in some Christian traditions, it's actually the building of a bonfire to indicate the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now we don't build bonfires usually, but we light a Paschal candle. We need a flame to remind us of the risen Christ. And when we join the church through baptism, we are given a piece of fire, a Paschal, a little baptismal candle lighted from the Paschal candle. So we are incorporated into the kingdom. And the kingdom of which we are a part is in a small way reflected in the church. For the church is in fact a forerunner of the kingdom of God. You and I as baptized by fire are called to give light to the world as any fire would give light. Think about it for a moment. When, when Jesus was on this earth as a human being, the only source of light 
that existed was fire. It was either a campfire or a cooking fire, or it was maybe a lighted torch, or maybe a flame of a little oil lamp. But it was fire that gave light in the darkness. So it's not surprising that over the centuries, the church has turned to Jesus and the church as a light in the darkness. You and I are called to proclaim the kingdom of God, which means that we are to tell the world and show the world the promise of God's salvation. And in so doing, we become a little fire, a light, to enlighten the world in which we live. Over and over again, when I read the newspaper or uh, look at the TV, I'm reminded that we live in a very dark world with all kinds of darkness surrounding us. And it is fearful. But we are told by Christ that the light that he brings, the fire he has brought to earth, can scare away those demons that are around us in the dark, the wild animals that threaten us, and instead we can live with a confidence and hope that we are surrounded by God's love. What did Jesus really mean when he said, I came to bring fire to the earth? I'm not sure. But I do think that at least we know this much, that he came to reveal the love of God to us, to assure us of God's love. One time when Luther was asked to describe God, he had a very interesting saying. He said, God is a mighty for, a furnace, a mighty furnace fueled by the love of God. What an interesting definition of God. A mighty furnace so that the flames are fueled by his love. I suspect that that may well be what Jesus meant when he said, I came to bring fire to the earth. Amen.